welcome everybody. My name is Jacqueline. I'm the Community Science and Outreach Coordinator for the Pacific Grove Museum of Natural History today. And today we have Roxanne from the Monterey Museum of Art who's going to teach us a new activity. My turn. Um, so the way it'll work today is I will have Roxanne will introduce herself. She'll tell us all the cool things that the Museum Monterey Monterey Museum of Art is doing, and she'll lead us through our, her activity, and then we'll try to save all of our Q&A for the end of the, the segment today. So thank you for joining in to Community to You, and here's Roxanne. Hi, everyone. I'm super excited to be a part of this, um, and thank you, Jacqueline, for inviting us. Um, and for you know inviting other community organizations to talk about what we're doing because everything's a little different right now and we at the museum are adapting to these times as well um we've been really looking at you know just because our physical doors are closed how can we still reach the public and engage people with art and, you know fulfill our mission and our responsibility and so some of the ways that we've been doing that is we just posted sort of an online exhibition where um, you can you know view some of the exhibitions that we have one of them is called um, oh no the art of education <laughs> The ripple effect and it's with MPC, Monterey Peninsula College, uh, our educators and their work. And so there's sort of a virtual tour through that exhibition. But we've also been reaching out with educational art projects. We have an initiative called RAD, Remote Art Days. Every Monday and Thursday we post different art projects and you know we're trying to reach out to our community partners and local artists as well on those days. And, just post, you know, art projects, simple things can be done with items that you have in your home. So that's uh, one of the projects that we're going to be, that I'm going to be teaching you can some, is something that can easily be done at home. Um, so we have a remote art days project. And then we're also, you know, arts doesn't just include visual arts, it also includes music as well. So we've been partnering with a local music therapy, Darcy Smith of ISO Rhythms Music Therapy for a project called Monterey County Sings. So we've um, teaching people how to make instruments out of everyday objects around their home, like shakers out of spice jars and things like that. And we're also inviting everyone to sing along to a song with us and submit their video submissions through there. And hopefully we'll be able to show the community coming together through music and art. And so we have a lot of really great ways to try to reach out into the community um, and uh, remind them all that we're still here and we still care and we think that art should be a part of our daily lives and so we're we're working really hard on that um oh and then a big thing that we have coming up soon is april 25th is our free family fun day but it's a virtual free family fun day obviously <laughs> um and the theme is natural wonders so we'll be posting a few videos and lesson plans uh, demonstrating how to make uh, different art projects that have sort of a inspiration from the natural world. So uh, one of these projects are going to be demonstrating for you guys. But so that's kind of what we're up to. Um, we're always looking to partner with more artists and you know see what other people are doing in the community as well. So if you are interested in any of these projects, you can visit our website, montreart.org. And we have a whole list of ways for you to still enjoy art from home. Yeah, that's kind of what we've got going on. <laughs> that sounds awesome. It looks like you guys, I posted their website in the chat box. Um, oh, definitely you. check it out. It sounds like they're doing so many cool things um, and we're here to support each other. I'm excited to learn um, what an anthotype is. <laughs> That's a really good segue. <laughs> so an anthotype is sort of like a, it's like a photographic process, but you're using organic materials like plant matter, water, and sunlight to create a print. So it's, it's really easy to do. Um, the process was sort of discovered in like the mid 1800s and people have been experimenting with it. If you know about sun prints or cyanotypes, it's similar to that, but um, different set of 
chemical reactions, but you're still using sun to expose a print. So I'm going to teach you how to do that from home. Um, yesterday was really sunny and I wish I took advantage of the direct sunlight. So my project didn't turn out as well as I, I hope. So I don't have a great example to show you, but I'll teach you how to do it. So you'll start off with um, what you'll end up with, and I'll teach you the process of how to get there, is a piece of paper that's been coated in uh, plant material that's been juiced. You want the juice. This one's a little chunky still because I left in some of the plant pulp, um, but I like it, the texture of it. And then you'll cover it with um, really anything. I cut out some paper or you can you know, do a drawing on a piece of plastic, whatever you want. You can even use a photo negative if you have one of those. And what you'll do is you'll put it on top and you put this out into the sun and it creates a print by the sun bleaching what's around the object that you put on top of your print. And when you reveal it, you'll have like the darkened image. So this is just my test example. And I don't think this one turned out. I'm waiting for the big reveal for this one. So this is a very simple process, but it takes some time. So it's kind of nice, you know, if you have a long day and you want to dedicate your time to something like this, it's nice to do something that's simple but a little bit slow. You kind of have to exercise patience in this. But there's a lot of room for creativity in how you make it. So your first step is to gather your plant materials. I used some veggie scraps that I had in my fridge and then I didn't think I had enough of that. Um, so I went outside and picked a bunch of weeds from the yard. <laughs> um, and then I put them in a blender so just, uh, I have a blender. If you don't have a blender, you could easily use uh, like a mortar and pestle, anything that, that's gonna grind up the plant material. And you'll wanna add a little bit of water to that. So I had a bunch of plant material in my blender. So I just sort of did a tablespoon at a time and blended until the pulp kind of got nice and juicy, I guess. Um, but if you're just doing one anthotype, if you just wanna cover like one half sheet of paper, Really all you'll need is maybe like five to 10 spinach leaves or leaves from your yard or leaves. So you really don't need that much. Start off a little bit of water, adding to it, and blend it. If you need a little bit more, add some more, but just go slowly. Um, so once I blended it, I kind of came up with this kind of goopy pulp, almost like a pesto consistency. It's a little juicy. Um, and you can put this directly on your paper. Um, like I said, you'll get sort of like that texture, like this one where you've got a little bit of the plant matter on there. Um, but the thing you want to keep in mind when you are applying your vegetable juice or your plant Um, something that's a little thicker than like coffee paper would be best construction paper but you know try it out um, so what you'll do is if you don't want the plant material you can strain the pulp from the plant juice so it ends up being um, just like a pure juice consistency this is one that I made the other day but how you can do that I have a measuring cup here and then I don't have cheesecloth or anything but that would probably work best so I just use a dish towel. Um, Tie-dye works nicely because we don't see the stains. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of create a well and then I'm just going to pour my plant material into the dishcloth just a little bit at a time. So I'm just going to wring the juice out of it. That already made a lot. This one's much darker than my other one. I don't know what I used that made this one better. Um, but yeah, you can have fun with it. It's all about being resourceful and seeing just what you have lying around. Like I said, if you wanted to go straight with spinach, that's probably going to be your best option. But just use whatever you have, you know, in the fridge or like carrot tops or, you know, plants from the garden, whatever. Um, 
what's that kind of cool thing about these projects? You have to be resourceful and it implies like a lot of creative thinking, which has been really exciting to see what people come up with lately. Um, so after I've wrung it out, I just have, you know, my juice. It's nice dark green. So I'm going to grab a paintbrush. You could use, if you don't have a paintbrush, you could use like foam or like a, I don't know, makeup sponge or something, or even just a paper towel, something that's going to create a nice even layer on your paper. I'm going to see if I can, so you can see what I'm doing. No, nope. back. So my first coat, I'm just going to put almost like a wash. If you've ever used watercolors, just a little bit of water. You don't want to do too much all at once. See, it's a really light green. That's not going to make much of a difference when I create my print. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to maybe do a couple layers, but you want to let this dry first before you add in more. And if, once you start to notice that your paper is taking a really long time to dry, that means your paper's pretty much had enough water and you, you need to stop at that point. So it's okay to build up layers. It's gonna create a better contrast for your image. So there's gonna be more definition between the light and the dark when you have your print. So the darker the green you start with, the better. So really dark green leafy vegetables are really good for this. Um, so you just want to coat nice and light. There's no puddles. Um, so just take your time with it. A hair dryer would work. I don't have a hair dryer, so I just have to wait until it dries. Um, but eventually you'll end up something that's a darker green. Now, once you have that, your paper treated with the green vegetable juice, and once it's dry, you want to create what's going to be your print. So I cut out some just shapes out of black construction paper. Um, you can do that or, you know, cut out, you know, magazine pictures or shapes, really anything that is going to block the sunlight from your anthotype paper. So whatever it is, it has to block it. Um, for this one, I had like a piece of like the plastic top for like a, a salad or something. So I just drew on it with Sharpie and cut it out. So again, you know, using what you have at home. And so this is like the sandwich material. And I just drew, you know, a little butterfly shape on it with Sharpie. And I went over it a couple of times because I really wanted to make sure that the sun wasn't going to go through there. Or like I said, you can use, you know, other pencil. It doesn't have to be black, but I think it's, more dramatic and striking. Um, so once you've done that, what you can do is create your composition or how you want to arrange your shapes or whatever materials you're putting on top of it. You can even use plant material, so like um, you have some like nice leaves, you can add those. Something that's going to lay flat though. You don't want anything that's going to be kind of sticking up on top of your paper because you're, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to protect it with another layer of plastic. So that way when you put it out into the sun, your objects aren't going to blow away, you know, in the wind or get toppled over or something like that. So you're going to need a flat layer, whatever you end up using. So say if I wanted to put a heart onto my anthotype once this is all dry, I'm going to slip it into a plastic food storage bag. If you have, um, this would, works really well if you have like a plastic sleeve or sheet protector could work really nicely or maybe even like a clear clipboard if you have that. Really anything that's just going to be, that's transparent, that's the number one thing and it's going to be able to protect your, your anthotype from which is a bummer. <laughs> but if you have um, direct sunlight, that's going to be best. And then really what you have to do is you just wait and take time and let the sun do its work. It's going to start breaking down the juice that's on the paper and the color that's there. So it's going to start bleaching your paper all around this. 
and everywhere that the sun is hit is going to be a lighter color. So when you peel off your, your object or your pattern or your design, it's going to be much darker where that is. Um, yeah, it's very exciting. If you are worried about the wind or if you don't have a flat space that's going to be protected that's in the sun, um, something that I've tried before is I just tape it right to the window, which is nice because you just have, you know, glass is clear and you just tape it there and it sits in a bright sunny window until it exposes. And it'll take a couple hours. So it's kind of like a like a crock pot, you know, you just set it and forget it and then come back to it and you have a fun art surprise. Um, but yeah, it's, it's super simple. You can try any types of ways you can experiment with how long you put it out in the sun, experiment with the materials that you use. You can crush up, you know, flower petals, try different colors. It doesn't just have to be green, um, but something that you can build up that layer and the sun is going to start breaking that down. Um, so hopefully, I use paper clips and binder clips to keep this together. If you have some of those or clothes pins, that's nice. I'm going to check this out. I don't think it worked. I don't think I put it in the sun long enough, but, you know, it did it. Anyway, <laughs> if you try it, it should work just fine. Um, but a bright sunny day is key to this, and so if you're sitting at home and you want to enjoy the sunshine, this is a great way to do it. It's a great way to um, be uh, sustainable with the materials that you use. If you, like for example, if you have um, the pulp from your, your goop, your pesto or whatever, if you didn't use weeds like I did and all of your materials being clean so far, you can still reuse that, like uh, put it in soups or muffins or something. Um, but it's a fun way to experiment with materials in a new way and so hopefully uh, you can create a fun photographic print. The only thing you need to keep in mind though is that that paper is still going to be sun sensitive so I wouldn't like display it in the sun again because the sun is just going to bleach your the image that you've created. But yeah and you can um, store your juice. I've just kind of been hanging on to it and keeping it in a shady spot in my yard and I'm hoping to make some more anthotypes soon when there's more sun out but it's just a fun project that can take you the day but it's simple and you have a really kind of fun process to it it's slow it's simple but you have a cool thing at the end so yeah that's an anthotype i think i just like lightning speed through it <laughs> like i said it's it's really easy but i wanted to share with you guys and if you want the lesson plan for that i sent that to jacqueline and you can print that out and that's a little more clear directions um, and we'll be going over it again for our free family fun day on April 25th again as well. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Roxanne. Um, I would like if anybody has questions that they have for Roxanne about the anthotype activity, I want to open up um, that to all of you guys. You can unmute yourselves and ask your question um, and we'll answer as best as we can. I'm also here for any questions that you're wondering about the Pacific Grove Museum of Natural History or if you had other questions about the Monterey Museum of Art for Roxanne. We're here to answer any of those. Um, while people are thinking of questions, go ahead and share in the chat box what materials in your home you think you might use for your anthotypes. That's so good. Yeah, I was like, I don't have any spinach. What can I do? <laughs> this whole time you were doing it, I was like, all right, what do I have? Food scraps. <laughs> oh, I definitely have carrot tops. Yeah. Mm. No, I feel so, I feel so wasteful to do Tomorrow, and they're still running, so we'll just take some food scraps from them. See if I can, the sun comes out. I'm gonna try again. Yeah. I know yesterday was completely opposite of our cloudy day today. I know. I put my image out for a couple hours, but it was like afternoon sun, so mm -hmm. I wasn't sure. And I was like, yeah, I've got all morning to do it. Mm -hmm. Woke up this morning, like, no. <laughs> well, 
People have got spinach that's not being eaten at home that could be used. <laughs> um, Marissa's asking, what's the best kind of paper to use for this activity? Oh, yeah. So if you happen to have watercolor paper, I'm, you know, an art person, so I have a whole stash of like tons of paper <laughs> of different kinds. But if you have watercolor paper, that's going to be the best because it's meant to soak in water and sort of hold that color and pigment. But um, like a thicker, like cardstock weight would be really good. Just, um, you know, because you're, you're spreading water onto paper. So if you're using something that's really thin, like 20 pound copier paper, it's not going to work super great. Uh, you can try it out and let us know <laughs> how that happened. On that note of um, being sustainable, what if we use like the car, you know, the inside of cardboard boxes, you know, like oh my gosh, a yeah. granola bar, bar box, and then inside is usually like a, a light brown color. Would that, you think those, that would work? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great idea. Um, yeah, anything that's going to hold paper. So I honestly I like kind of raided my recycling bin and was like, what can I use? <laughs> Ended up with the, the salad container for the image, which I thought worked pretty well. Um, because it's, you know, the plastic and the image in one piece. So I didn't have to worry about things moving around or getting, you know, knocked somewhere else. So, you know, just be creative with it. Yeah, you can use grass from your yard for sure. I, you know, stop. Oh, question for Roxanne. How did you get involved in art education? Oh, that's a really fun question. Well, for me. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've always been interested in art and, you know, as a very young person, didn't really know what to do with that because I wasn't sure if I wanted to be an actual artist. You know, I love to make art, but I didn't know that that was my passion and you need a lot of passion to pursue being an artist. Um, and then, so, you know, I ended up getting a job at the Monterey Museum of Art as a gallery guide and it was to you know walk through the galleries and engage guests with the works that are on display and I have an art history background so that helped with that and I just like talking to people about art and I sort of just sort of fell into this position of like well how do I how do I engage people more how do I talk about this in a way that's more accessible for people and kind of discovered the world of art education and that led to wanting to learn more about that and I love working with kids I love teaching and you know art is something that I'm very passionate about so it kind of just came together really nicely and I have I, I love my job I have an incredible team that I get to work with and we get to share art with everyone and we get to make it um, make sense and we get to do the school tours and you know, it's the first time that most of those students have ever been to a museum or ever seen a work of art you know, in person that's, you know, framed and on display. And it's a, it's a really fun, impactful experience for us and hopefully them. It's very rewarding. Yeah, that's kind of my journey into art education. Uh, that's really cool. Um, let's see. Anybody else have any other questions about the Monterey Museum of Art or what's happening at the Pacific Grove Museum of Natural History right now? Um, I'm actually gonna try this out. I've never done an anthotype before, so I'm gonna maybe try it sometime this weekend and, and see what I get. So if any of you guys try this activity and you post it to social media, go ahead and tag the Pacific Grove Museum of Natural History and tag them up. Monterey Museum of Art and because um, we'd really love to see what you guys are creating. I have put my email in the chat too. Feel free to email it straight to me um, and, and you might get featured in one of our events. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, Roxanne, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Nothing I can think of. 
yeah, just um, if you want to follow us on social media, it's um, on Instagram, you know, Monterey, at Monterey Art, or, you know, you can follow us on Facebook. We're posting all of our events and cool things that we're trying to do from home and just trying to keep people engaged. And if you like what you saw here, stay tuned. <laughs> I know we're definitely going to keep collaborating and trying to um, just keep making materials for all of you guys stuck at home, just like us. So uh, we look forward to it, creating all this um, interesting and education material. It's a lot of fun. Uh, just some events that are happening coming up for the Monterey oh, Pacific Road Museum of Natural History. We have on um, Monday, we have Museum Mondays. Tuesdays, Exploring the Coast with uh, Hannah. Wednesdays are the Create With Me crafts. So this coming Wednesday, I'm making um, paper flowers, um, but not just any paper flowers. They're gonna be flowers that are native to California. Um, Thursday, we'll have Sciencing in Place and a Closer Look. And Fridays, we have Bug Out with Brie. <laughs> And next Saturday, um, for our Community to You event, we're gonna have the Elkhorn Slough Reserve. Um, we're gonna teach us about skulls of local mammals. So we're looking forward to that. Um, on the 25th, we have our Digital Science Saturday, which is our free family event for about dinosaurs, the Day of the Dinosaurs. And then also on the 25th of April, um, the, Monterey Museum of Art is having their free family fun day, virtually as well. Um, so it sounds like April 25th is gonna be um, a day full of fun and activities. So stay tuned. Um, this video will get posted on YouTube and our Museum to You webpage. And thank you all for joining. Thanks for having me. I had so much fun. <laughs> thank you so much, Roxanne. And thank you guys. We appreciate your um, participation.